So when people ask me if they should upgrade to that new CPU that just came out, it's a really tough question because A, it depends on what you had before and B, the benefit may vary depending on what else you have in your system. And the second point is really important because let's say somebody has a okay-ish rig. Let's say it's a 2060S and some older whatever mid-tier Ryzen and it died. So now the question comes up if they should spend 350 to 400 euros on the 5600X or 200 euros on the 3600X. And I find it a bit frustrating because many reviews out there praise that new Ryzen 5600X as being this 10 to 20% increase over the 3600X. And they are not wrong, but the results are kind of... Hmm, if you throw in a 2080 Ti or 3090. Because let's be honest, no person in their right mind would go out, sell their kidney for a 3090 and then be like, no, sure, but no. So for today, I wanted to find out how much of a benefit would an upgrade give you if you have a somewhat normal PC. Do you need to work a lot with PDF files on the go? Then Wondershare has your back, because PDF Element Pro is now also available on iOS and iPadOS. With PDF Element Pro, you will be able to create PDF files from blanks or images, view existing PDF files and edit them with highlights, insertions, notes or even fill out forms and just sign them. Basically everything a PC PDF editor can do, but on your phone. And then there is even more, because if you use the camera function, you can scan multiple documents and create a PDF file from them. If you want to know more about PDF Element Pro, make sure to check out the links in the description below. So to get to the bottom of this, we've gathered everything we have flying around here. Or a GTX 1650, or 1660 s or 2060S, or 3070, and the 2080, which is right now back in the editing rig, so let's just pretend it's here. So these cards are what we thought a normal gaming PC would be in the average household, starting from beginner to higher end. And I find this to be quite fair, because if we take a look at Steam spec survey, the 2080 comes in at 0.85% and the 3070 is not even on there yet. And let's be honest, if you buy a 1000 euro GPU, you would never go for a mid-tier CPU. Okay. For the rest, we've got a Gigabyte B550DS3H for Ryzen 5000 support, a Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim on top, and 64 gigs of G-Skill Aegis 3200 memory. And to keep this even more average, we did absolutely nothing to the CPUs at all. The only thing that was done in the BIOS was the XMP profile for the RAM, because that's not enhancing performance, that's basically configuring your stuff the right way. So this whole thing here is as close to out of the box as it gets. Now, we did perform a lot of testing in the last few days. We took three random AAA titles from 2017, 18 and 19, Metro Exodus, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Horizon Zero Dawn, and benchmarked them on each of the GPUs on the 3600X, then swapped it out for the 5600X and repeated the whole thing. And on a side note, Horizon Zero Dawn is a pain in the ass to benchmark because it's great that there is an in-game benchmark, but each time you swap out the GPU, the game goes into discovery mode and does basically nothing for 10 minutes straight. Of course, we also wanted to address the use cases that are requiring mainly CPU power. So we also did a handbrake encoding test, a Cinebench test and fired up Premiere Pro with some 4K footage. So after painstakingly doing 10 GPU CPU combinations over here, here are the results for the 3600X. Everything looks just as expected. Garbage FPS for the 1650, but once you have a 2060S, each game runs about that 60 FPS threshold. Okay, now let's throw in the 5600X for the 1650. Yeah, like expected, no changes at all, completely GPU dependent. The only odd thing being that there is a 9% decrease for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. No idea why, all of these numbers are average FPS for 3 runs. It's just that. With the 1660S, still no change. Sure, an FPS here or there, but nothing outside of the margin of error. 
Now with the 2060S, so already a good mid-tier 400 euro plus card, nothing. Nothing. And now with the 2080S, the game starts to be less GPU bound, even though Metro Exodus is still a bit GPU bound. But for Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Metro Exodus, we get a 10 to 15% increase, which is a lot. And if we throw in the 3070, we have a 10 to 20% increase all across the board. Sure, these are just a couple of games, and if you would take a heavily CPU intensive game, that moment where you get a benefit may come much quicker, but I'm trying to talk average here. So, the Ryzen 5600X is a major upgrade of our last gen, but my point is, if your main activity is gaming, you will only get a difference compared to the 3600X if you are running a high-end card. And I do think that people that are running 2080 Ti's, 3080's, 3090's will never go for a 5600X, that's just unrealistic. So to get back to that initial question, if you have a rig and the CPU is dead, and let's say you have a 2060S, 2070, buying a 5600X over a 3600X will only make you spend 200 euros extra without any benefit. So a upgrade or replacement would be a really dumb idea. In case you are building a new rig, the same rule applies. If you are planning to use a 3070 2080S with a 5600X, great choice. But if your GPU will be lower end, save that money and just go for the 3600X. Now, this was only the gaming part and it would be really unfair to the CPU to only look at that. So let's get some real work done. With Cinebench, the 5600X got 18% more points than the 3600X, so consistent to that 10 to 20% increase. For Handbrake, the exact same thing, 18%, great. And to test this even further, we used Premiere Pro with some random 4K footage and applied some light color correction. And this is basically the moment where my Ryzen 3700X that is in my editing rig is, is straight up gone, no chance. Now for the 3600X, it was as expected. Scrolling around is laggy at best, and if you are playing footage, it becomes extremely laggy in a matter of seconds. Now with the 5600X, this changed a bit. Sure, the scrolling is still somewhat the same, but playing content becomes way less laggy, or at least after a longer period. So when it comes to CPU intensive workflows, the 5600X is a major upgrade, but if you ask the question, should I upgrade, I think no, you shouldn't. If you are running a decent rig with a higher tier GPU, you wouldn't go for Ryzen 5 anyway. And if you have a lower end card, you will have no benefit at all. Of course, except if you are doing CPU intensive tests. But in those cases, you would also tend to go for Ryzen 7 or probably 9. Now, if you would build a new rig, then it is a completely different question. And the answer is basically only if you have a 2080S equivalent or higher, or if you want to do a CPU intensive tasks. So overall, I do agree with the majority of reviews out there that this is a hack of a CPU, but the benefits are only noticeable under certain conditions. And right now the 5600X is going for around 500 and the 3600X for 200 euro I'm coming from. But be aware that at some point the price will start to drop or at least be what it was initially announced. So at that point, the comparison of price to performance will be better for the 5600X and it will at some point become the better option for everybody. Okay, so this should be all for the Ryzen 5600X. I hope you've enjoyed it, but you are always free to leave your opinion with a thumb up, thumb down or the comment section below. And make sure to be subscribed because now I have finally time to dig a bit deeper into my 3070 over here even though I'm a bit late for that game. But until then, have a look at one of these totally random videos.